ever since high school, I've either failed or gotten a very low C in uh, my math classes. Uh, since taking this class, I'm now looking at an A minus, uh, A, A grade. Well, I remember the first day, I think um, one of the students said, um, are we expected to think this hard the whole term? And I, and I said yes, and I said, and that's not a bad thing to have to think. It is frustratingly awesome. <laughs> um, frustrating because it does force you to think in a different manner than, because I just did the math 54, and then I came to this class. So this one requires you to understand what it is you're doing and why you do what you do, and then explain it. For the first 10 minutes of the class, what we do is we go over some basic skills. We are beginning to call them essential skills now uh, because some of the skills, when you say something is basic, okay. it might seem like it's, you know, it's easy. Fine, but some skills are not it's so not easy done. and yet they're really important still. Yeah. And so I think we're going to call them essential skills. So the first 10 minutes are put up a couple of problems, have you know, students work on them yeah. for five minutes. So we want you to go ahead and, and uh, do these two. Uh, these three problems, actually. And then either I or my SI tutor, Jeff, will go over the, over the problems with the students. And then what we do is I, I usually do a PowerPoint presentation where the beginning of it is just a review of what we did the day before, just to bring everyone up to speed where we are exactly in our understanding about a given idea. And then I will transition over to today's lesson, and I'll lay out what the problem situation is going to be what we're going to study today. Remember, we just want to, we want an we want to figure out if this estimate is consistent with his advertisement, right? right? He's saying it's going to cost $600 to see this. Usually that will take me about 10 minutes. So we do the 10 minutes of essential skills. Then we try to 10 minutes of lecture where it's just me talking about what we did before and what we're going to do today. And then after I laid out the problem situation, the students will work in groups for about half an hour on a series of questions on the problem situation um, that will have mathematics embedded in it. And after the students have worked on it, we have, we have them write their solutions or their solution processes on the whiteboards. And then the, solution, uh, the students will present their solutions to the whole class. They're thinking how they went about thinking, solving um, the, the problems or the questions that were asked about the problem situation. And then I'll take about 10 minutes to 10 to 15 minutes to lead a whole class discussion based on what the students have presented in class itself. And then about five minutes, you know, if we have five minutes, I'll try to go over what they should look over for the coming lesson the next day. I, th I think initially they were concerned, some students were concerned that they might be wrong about their answer. But I think um, over the weeks when they realized that, hey, it's all right to have answers that are wrong, but they, they actually turn, turn out to be useful tools to understand why something is wrong. And so I'm going to start out with this group over here. Tell us how far you made it. Don't worry about being right or wrong, because remember, I make more mistakes before 9 in the morning than you will the rest of the day, right? So go ahead. Uh, explain to me what you got so far. I, I've tried to tell them that, look, it's not my thinking that we want to model, it's your thinking that we want to explore. And so even if your stuff appears to be wrong, we can use that to figure out, you know, what is the mathematics? Why were you thinking about it, something in the wrong way and what's the right way to do it? And usually, most of the time, students are pretty good about just, you know, getting over their fear of presenting material. The other way that I've tried to encourage them to participate is we have a forum online that my um, SI tutor asked me to put on, on online where students can post their questions and other students can answer their questions. The biggest difference is that I do a lot less lecturing. In my other classes, I would probably, I think, dominate what was going in the classroom. So it would be like me talking for about 80% of the time, maybe 90% of the time. Here, it's, it's the students doing most of the talking 75 to 85 percent with me doing about 20 percent of the of the actual um, talking in the class. I think it's a lot better than 60 because we work as groups and again we uh, use math that we're going to apply in the real world instead of a bunch of formulas and the, the use of having people come together as peers not just a teacher up teaching 
is it works better for me. The way it's taught is completely different than any other class. You get to look at math problems not by just trying to solve the problem one way that the professor tells you to, but through many different ways and getting to look at other people's perspectives on how to solve it. Well, initially, the students, I think, um, were not sure how to react, but they started enjoying, I think, more and more um, the mathematics. And they really enjoyed, I think, being able to understand some concepts for the very first time in their lives. And a number of them have made the comment that it's because we give them time to think, that you know we're not just trying to rush through um, let's solve 10 equations today, right? It's more, hey, if you've got a problem situation, a real estate problem situation, here's a series of questions related to this one problem situation. Take your time, think about it, you know? And so I think they feel like they are really developing mathematically. Another way that this class is different, um, if, if, if you look at the content, the, the stuff, the math stuff that we're studying, it's very different from traditional classes. In traditional classes, you know, if you think of algebra, it's a lot of ex just solving equations and factoring, and each, each chapter just seems like it has more equations in it, and the equations just keep getting complicated. And even though they have application problems in, in the traditional uh, algebra classes, the real, they're not very realistic. So they'll have examples like, you know, if two trains leave at different times, at different speeds, at what time will one train take or overtake another. And so it's, it's an artificial real life situation and not many students can relate to that. What we did with the content of this course is try to make the content, the math content, um, a lot more realistic in terms of what, no matter what your field of study was going to be, you would find, find the content relevant, you'd find it engaging, you would find it empowering. So a lot of stuff that we look at, for example, is like um, how do you read credit card statements, right? Within the credit card statements, what we're trying to teach is a percentage concept, but we're using the credit card statements as a way of uh, understanding percentage. He presents it in a way that we use it in everyday life. And it just, it's starting to click for me. Pretty interesting. Uh, it does have a lot of real, real world applications. Uh, that this uh, math class goes over, um, like things dealing with our taxes, things dealing with rural populations, and things of that nature. One of the problems that we worked on recently was the blood alcohol content problem. And you know, so when, when a state trooper pulls over a motorist and measures the blood alcohol, and well, how is blood alcohol content measured? And so the students seem pretty engaged. The BAC, things like that, things that we face every day, or, um, or the greatest benefit to myself because uh, you know you can step outside the classroom and you can see where it applies. And the way we approached that lesson would be we said, hey, if you had to come up with an equation that would compute blood alcohol content, what would you have to take into account? And the students were really engaged trying to figure out, okay, how would we, you know, what are the important things that you have to take into account if you want to come up with an equation? Figuring out the area of a, of a a yard and, and how to do fencing and, and things like that. It's kind of real life situation and things that I'm doing right now. You know, I'm doing a fence at my grandma's house. So all that formula helped figure out exactly how many boards I was going to need and uh, posts and everything else. This class is a little bit harder to prepare for because I have not taught a class like this before. So I don't have any model in, in my own mind as to how a class like this is going to be, is going to be taught. So in a way, you know, it's, it's very, liberating, but at the same time it's a little bit stressful because you're having to create the, um, what you're going to do every day and you've never seen it before. It makes the preparation a little bit easier because I know that even though if I don't have a, a, a perfect lesson, that even if things don't go as well as I want them to go, the students are, are, will jump in and they will fill in any gaps that I might have. Plus, because I know they'll ask me all sorts of questions, right, I don't have to like have a script with me uh, that this is what's going to happen throughout this throughout the class because I know that depending on what the students will be saying um, it will make it a lot more interactive and I'll be able to think my way through the lesson itself with the preparation I think part of what I try to do is I try to think about if students get stuck on some question what are some questions I can prompt them with get them moving forward and um, so I think for me, that will get easier. 
as I teach this class again and again because I know where some of the stumbling blocks will be for the students. And what I can do is um, make a list of questions that I can take with me to the classroom or even just have them in my head and, and say, okay, if students get stuck, I can ask them to think about this question and that'll get them thinking in the right direction. This class has sparked my interest more and my grades are getting better um, because I think miss, the way Mr. Law teaches it and, and how he presents the formulas and, and real life situations. But after this Math 96 class, you know, I think I really do want to actually dive into the math and, be, and go into an engineering degree where before I think I was just going to be you know, another infantry guy being a cop. <laughs>